All right, so here we are with number one on cumulative review 11. Let's get to it. Uh, the degree of this polynomial, the highest exponent is 4. The leading coefficient number attached to that variable is negative 1. The possible number of terms, also known as the uh, extrema as well, okay, remember our extrema or possible number of terms is always one less than our degree, so that is 3, okay. The possible number of zeros is always equal to our degree, so that's 4, all right, of real zeros, excuse me. Okay, so we have an even function and an, um, a negative leading coefficient. Remember, if it's even and negative, or excuse me, if it's even, and positive, we're going up, up, and away. If it's even and a negative leading coefficient, I'm going down, down, and down. If it's odd and positive, disco man, I'm going like that. If it's odd and negative, I'm going up, down. Okay? Um, so if it's even and negative, you're going down, down, down. So y is going to negative infinity for both. As x gets bigger, y is getting smaller. As x gets smaller, y is also getting smaller. Okay? To solve for my roots or x-intercepts, all right, that means y, our function, is going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to set my function of negative x to the 4th plus 4x squared equal to 0 and factor and solve. I like factoring so that my x squared is positive, so I'm going to take out a negative x squared so this is x squared minus 4 equals 0, okay? Um, now, technically, I can continue to factor this. Uh, some of us may just set it equal to 0 right away. That's fine. If you wanted to continue to factor, it would be x plus 2, x minus 2. So I'm just going to set each factor equal to 0 right away because we're probably in the habit of doing that. So I know that x is going to be 0 here. If I divide by negative 1, 0 over any number, it's still 0. Take the square root of 0, I get 0. So I get x squared equals 4. Square root, square root, x equals plus or minus 2. So our roots and x-intercepts are 0, 0, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. Okay. Um, multiplicity, which is sometimes confusing for people. All right, this positive and negative 2 only appear once. So 2, 0, multiplicity of 1. Negative 2, 0, multiplicity of 1. And 0, 0, multiplicity of 2. Okay, now why is it a multiplicity of 2? Well, because it's a double root. Here, I have x squared. So really, that is x times x. It's x times x, right? So I could technically set each of those x is equal to 0, and I would have 0 twice. Okay, that would be a double root. It's a multiplicity of 2, because there are 2 x equals 0. Okay, that's the first one. That was fun. Oh, we have to graph it. I'm so sorry. 0, 0, negative 2, 0, and 2, 0. I always forget to graph. If my multiplicity is 1, I jog through. Let's get a different color. If my multiplicity is 1, I jog through. If I have a double root and my multiplicity is 2, I bounce off. And then I jog through again. Okay. Now, it doesn't matter how high this comes up. I could have set this up really high, bounce it off, and come up really high like that. All that matters is that you're jogging through or you're running right through. You're bouncing off the zero and running through that route as well. Okay? All right. Let's go on to number two. Okay? Now, I have negative 4i to the ninth. Remember, when I have an imaginary number, I want to write that imaginary number as a power of 4. How many powers of 4 can go into 9? Okay. Well, I have i to the 4th times i to the 4th 
times i to the first. I have 1, 2 powers of, of 4. Why do I do this? Because I know that i to the fourth is just 1 times 1, and I just leave that as i. Anytime you see i to the ninth, let's i to the ninth, i to the eleventh, think about how many times 4 goes into that number, okay? And write it out, or you can think about it in your head as well, okay? Because this i to the ninth is really negative 4 i. Because I have i to the fourth twice, which is just 1, so that changes the i. This 7, okay, plus 7 times the square root of negative 9. Well, I know the square root of negative 9 gives me 3 i. And then plus 8. Okay, a common mistake. A lot of people just add, start adding and, you know, combining like terms. All right, but I have to multiply first. 7 times 3i gives me 21i plus 8. Negative 4 plus 21 gives me 17. Now, I always have to write my non-imaginary number first and my imaginary number second when writing a complex number, okay? So it is in standard form. The biggest part about this, all right, is the i to the ninth. The i to the ninth can be i to the fourth times i to the fourth times i to the first. Okay, and break it down in terms of i to the fourth power. All right, next, here I cannot have an imaginary number on in my denominator. All right, I cannot have a complex number in my denominator. All right, so I want to multiply by the complex conjugate the complex conjugate. So that is 5 minus 2i. And what I do to the top, bottom, I have to do to the top. So I'm going to have to do a little FOIL action here. Okay, 3 minus 4i times 5 minus 2i all over 5 plus 2i times 5 minus 2i. Okay, foil it out. The top becomes 15 minus 6i minus 20i plus 8i squared all over 25 um, minus 10i plus 10i minus 4i squared. These cancel. My numerator, 16. This is really 8i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1. So this is 8 times negative 1, so it's really negative 8. i squared is negative 1, so that becomes negative 8. So I have 15 minus 8, 7, minus 26i. 4i squared. i squared is negative 1, so this becomes positive 4. So all over 29, and to write as a complex number, I need to separate, write it as 2, and leave it. Height? Height. Number 3. Find a polynomial in standard form, not factored form, that has the following zeros. So, if 3 is a 0, then x minus 3 is a factor. If 4 is a 0, then x minus 4 is a factor. 5x plus 5. And so is, sorry, x minus 0. Okay, some of us can just automatically realize that that's just x. That's totally fine. Remember, how do I get x minus 3? Well, I know that x equals 3. So to move it to the other side, all right, to get my factor, I get x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, I would have to subtract the 3. That's just the opposite when it's in factored form. This right here is factored form right there. Okay, 
right there. So now that I have factored form, I want to FOIL my factored form. This becomes x squared um, plus x minus 20. A little mental math there. Distribute the x. x squared minus 3x. And yeah, I have a binomial times a trinomial. I need to multiply, distribute everything in my binomial to everything in my trinomial. So x squared to everything. So I have x to the fourth plus x to the third minus 20x squared. Same thing. Remember how I said in the last video when I taught this that I need, I like to line up my common terms, all right, just to make my life easier when I combine them. Okay. So then when I combine them, I can just add straight down. Excuse me. Wow. So I have x to the fourth. 1x cubed minus 3x cubed gives me negative 2x cubed. Negative 20 and negative 3 gives me negative 23x squared plus 60x. That is our function. Okay. Equals f of x. Wow. Next page. Here we go. Number four. Let's do it. All right. Um, divide and put a number around your final answer. Okay, so here I have a trinomial divided by a binomial. Here I have my binomial. Okay, it has a squared, so that means I have to use long division. If it was a trinomial, all right, and this was a just a linear factor, then I could use synthetic division. All right, now, I have 2x to the 4th. I don't have any x to the 3rd, so remember, I have to use a placeholder. Plus, zero, or plus 3x squared. No x term, so again, I have to use a placeholder. And minus 6. Because these two terms, this x and this x to the 3rd, are there, okay, but you just don't see them. They have the 0 there, so it goes away, right? It goes away. Bye-bye. 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 Oh, boy, I am running out of time. I'm going to pause it and then continue this on to the next video. All right?